Hello friends and foes, I know you're watching as well, you can't stay away from this kind of content. Welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel, it's time to rank 29 incredibly specific players who you think should change position. It's time we got you involved. So you responded to a tweet, follow me, at James Allcott, and now you will be ranked. Before we get into this video, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 200k, so if you can, move your hand and click the button. I mean, come on. It would just be helpful. Hit the like button as well if you like this idea of putting tweets out there, getting your ideas, and then ranking them. Hit the like button if you like that as well. Now, in the words of Usher, watch this, watch this. All right, let's kick off with the comment that spawned the tweet that's created this whole idea. Press start gaming. I mean, I just wanted to chuck it out there and see how people felt about it, I'll be honest. Maybe it's bullying. I mean, hopefully not. Often I want to be open and go, maybe this is a good idea and I'm missing something. Let's see what the calm and considered people on Twitter think. On this occasion, I think they agree with me on this one, that United should not try to make wan a six. United should try wan as a six. I th this is a crime. You should be ashamed of yourself. Is it one year ban from the channel? Two week ban from the channel. Okay. Maybe in 2000, I'm thinking Gareth Southgate when he played defensive midfield and just kind of did a job there, then yeah. But for Man United, do you think that's going to solve it? Hey, guys. Guys. Yeah, I guess I need to be able to do that. You know, Wan you know, he's rubbish at right back. Yeah. Well, he's not rubbish, but he's like just not really up at this standard. He's not really good enough technically going forward. Yeah. Pop him in midfield. <laughs> you know, we've been struggling in midfield a bit, haven't we? Yeah, because we can't kind of can't seem to get on the ball and retain and, and control possession. Be progressive. Pop Wan Bazaka there. Mm. Okay, we, no, we're not going to do that. Who are you? Can you leave the training session, please? Let's stick with Wambasaka with our second one. Um, my boy Ali Tacticality on Twitter. Go give him a follow. Well, Wambasaka, but this time as a right sided centre back in a back three. I think this is the one role he would thrive in at an elite level. Totally agree with that. And I think this is a better one. You know, the ranking for the first one, by the way, two out, mm, one out of ten. It, it's, an, it's a shocker. Six out of ten for this one, because I think this is the one that uh, has been put forward quite often. And it's understandable because it will be kind of a calm level of. of possession a lot of the time he's not terrible on the ball i'm being harsh there but he's safe with the ball and if you think of what carl walker's done ben davies i think there's a real option there his recovery runs would be great one-on-one -on -one defending is great as well so i think that's something he could do i'm of the opinion now that to win the premier league i don't think you can play three at the back I think you just need so much more going forward and having having three at the back. Obviously, you might have one and have two really progressive centre-backs. Maybe. But I just think it's a bit of a waste and I don't expect Ten Hag to trial a back three anytime soon. So, won't work at Man United. But actually, one way, if he went somewhere else, that versatility of being able to do both of those could be really, really useful. Next up, Christopherson. He basically plays there anyway, but always reckon Deli Alley false nine up on his own would work. I think Firmino's role... 2018. I quite like this one. I've always been confused about Deli Alley and what his position really is. And actually, I think kind of labelling anything is, is what it is, right? But think of him at Spurs. I remember thinking sort of arriving late in the box at times and, and making, you know, scoring good headers, good elements of finishing, but on the ball being a 10. I think he struggles as a 10. I think his movement and the positions that he picks up are strong, but I don't think... He's that strong on the ball in terms of getting out of trouble and then playing those key passes a lot of the time. The problem you got with Everton is that they're not really going to play a false nine that often because I think you need a false nine. You're going to have to dominate the ball a little bit more. But it's an option with Everton with the lack of money that they've got and the lack because they spent it on Deli Alley to a point, but also lack of forward options. Now Richarlison's gone at the time of recording i think that this is a good option because i think he's got the size as well to be a, a striker and, and get involved in that way he is a bit hybrid so i like this seven and a half out of ten harry kane as an eight would be a joke is it a good joke or a bad joke let me know in the comments i think this one's really up for grabs because weirdly i wonder about his stamina and i don't know if that's just because he plays in quite a to a point lackadaisical style these days not pressing 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 all the time and that's probably down to the style of play that spurs play as well in an alternate universe harry kane is at liverpool scoring 20 goals assisting 20 goals because the passing that he obviously has is amazing on the left of a of a midfield three being able to sort of 
get on the ball, play vertical passes, play, you know, maybe a bit of a Thiago vibe to him. Is he a good enough defender? Again, it's difficult because you don't really see it that often, but I quite like this one. I would never have thought it. So well done to T-Dog. Eight and a half out of 10. Josh Davis, Suchek as a nine. I get what you're thinking. I'm not totally on board with it. Maybe it's sort of, again, when you think about Moyes, Everton, West Ham, and the sort of, I guess, the synergy in terms of what he's built at both. Maybe it's the kind of Fellaini move. I kind of get what you're saying there. But I think the fact that, he, yes, he's never going to kind of run the channels. So there's so much you can do with him. And you're probably missing out on the actual stamina that he's got because I, I think it takes him that little bit longer just to move about the pitch. I get it. Has he got the finishing either? Not totally sure. Not sure about this. I'm going to go six and a half out of ten. Feels a bit more like a go on, go up front and impact the game kind of thing when you're struggling near the end. Sticking with Josh Davis, um, who's got a real investment in the number nine role and finding new suitors for it. Who do you support, Josh? Let me know in the comments below, actually. I'll be intrigued to know if that's part of it, if you're just gasping for a number nine at your club. But he's gone with Marcus Alonso as a number nine. So based on finishing ability alone, I, I think I quite like this. I think there's goals to be had. You do, I can imagine him kind of being a bit of a Yarmolenko or maybe like Podolski, if you think of that, like that left foot that Alonso has. I've been always been intrigued to see if Alonso could play it without that sort of, you know, that, that touch line there, because I think there's a safety to that. I know it's less space there, but also it means that there's no one coming from that side as well. He has got a great ability to sort of know where to go in terms of the sort of attacking sense of the game, getting in the box, finding opportunities and then taking them. So again, I don't hate this one. Could he do it at the Premier League level? Probably not. Probably doesn't have the pace for it, maybe. But I like this actually more than Suchek. I can't remember what I said for Suchek. I'm going to go six and a half out of ten. Seven out of ten for Alonso. Nick Levesque, my Canadian Greek brother. Jack Grealish should be Pep's go-to left eight if Bernardo leaves. I've always liked this idea. I've always loved the idea of Grealish as an eight because I've seen it. I saw it at Aston Villa when um, they played QPR at Loftus Road and he absolutely ran the game. I think that's when I completely fell in love with Jack Grealish. Definitely. I think this could really, really work. Again, it's, I mean, obviously there's a tactical side of it, but this is a guy who has played in midfield at different times. Can he offer the same kind of work rate as Bernardo? Don't know. But in terms of that position, that left eight, I don't think that's too much of a push. So nine out of 10, but I think that's just because he's kind of become that left sided midfielder. It is a position he has played previously in his career. How's Pelaqueta? Rice in the middle of a back three. I'm going to kind of add another layer to this because I think in the middle of a back three, yeah, again, it's an obvious one. It's something that he has done in the past. I think you're losing a lot of the best bits of him. What I would like to see, though, is him as a libero. So football manager fans, you will know the benefits of a libero. And it's someone who would start in that position of that back three, but have that ability to, to come out with the ball and drive with the ball and start attacks. I think the way that teams press now, I wonder if a libero is really, really difficult thing to, to sort of implement in modern football these days. But I bloody love to see it. And if anyone's going to be good at it, being able to be sort of press proof and confident enough to come out with the ball like that, it will be someone like Declan Rice. You do lose, obviously, him being able to do that higher up the pitch from midfield. But I wouldn't mind seeing that. So I'm going to give that an eight and a half out of ten just because it's it's got me salivating. At not alt X, Cutty Romero as a box to box midfielder. No, no, no. Disaster waiting to happen. Yuck. Three out of ten. Liam, who's an Everton fan, I've always thought Stones would have been a decent six. I don't think he could do it at the like top, top level, you know, England, Man City. But I wonder if this is one where, in time, I think he's too big to be a six. Like, I know he's stupid. I'm just, I'm just going on my gut feeling on this. But if you imagine him at Everton in the last, sort of, latter end of his career, where he's going to sort of Tom Huddleston it a little bit. Again, I don't think he's got the technical ability of that, but having had the career that he's had, there's a possibility this could work. Eight out of ten. I think I'm being generous there. To be honest, I don't see this happening anytime soon, obviously, with Rodri being amazing. But I think it's one where once he gets into his 30s and maybe loses a bit of pace, he might want to step into that role and use that experience that he's gathered. Going to put two together, Trent and Rhys James as centre midfielders. Patricia said, any of the best right backs in the Prem in midfield. I think, yeah, that is something that we're kind of not seeing weirdly because there's so much benefit from, especially the top teams, having those quality players out wide because that's where the space can be. You can have underlapping runs, overlapping runs. There's just so much to offer. And I think Trent in particular is kind of 
set that tone in terms of modern football. Rhys James, I know for a fact, having seen him at Wigan, is definitely good enough to be a centre midfielder. Trent, I think, I think he's just the weapons that he has out there are just so so impressive that actually, as time goes on, I'm I'm thinking it's not worth it as much as I have done previously. But it's always an option for them. The problem you have for Liverpool to ever even experiment with that is that you lose Trent from right back. Same would go for Rhys James. So you'd have to have a kind of successor in place to ever see this happen. But no doubt, ten out of ten, both could play centre midfield. Van Dijk is a target man, Ollie Johnson says. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm sure he could. Do you really need a target man anymore? But I think it could, probably could work. One for the comments. One for the comments, this one. Could Van Dijk be a quality target man in the Premier League? Could he Mitrovic it? Let me know in the comments below. Harry Mummery, Jacob Ramsey as a false nine, has the finishing ability and would be able to drive the ball forward into the space left for the traditional nine, while being able to spray the ball to Buendia and Coutinho on either side. I like elements of this. I also think Jacob Ramsey as a young lad is going to fill out a little bit, which could be of use of playing as a, as a false nine. Obviously, it's not the be all and end all. And I think he's already quite impressive in terms of the sort of tactical system. I, I don't think the spraying of the balls is going to happen to uh, Buendia or Coutinho because I don't think they're going to play that wide. I think it's quite a narrow system. But broadly speaking, don't hate it. Does have good finishing ability is able to get the ball and turn. That is the thing that he loves to do, get on the ball and turn. So for a, a false nine, I think that's a nice little element that he would have. So I, I like it. Eight and a half out of ten. Less of a stinker. We haven't had one for a while. Uh, Ill has gone, uh, if we're going rogue, Pulisic at right back. Not even right wing back, right back. Look, the guy gets blown over by a heavy gust of wind. No. I think, look, I guess you've got the stamina there. Does he have that intensity to drive with the ball and, and create exciting things from that point? Yeah. Would it maybe work if it was a last ditch thing that you needed to do to sort of, I don't know, second leg of a Champions League final, you need to score eight. So you're going to chuck him as a right back? Maybe, but overall you're disgusting and you should be ashamed of yourself for tweeting that. Richard Sox, Matip in a midfield role. Jinking past defenders into the penalty area. I'm not having this one, I'm afraid. I think he needs that kind of distance and that ability to see what's in front of him and not being surrounded by players to, to play and make those really aggressive, exciting, praying mantis type runs. But putting him in midfield, first of all, he would just crumble injury-wise. Second of all, I think he'd get found out. <laughs> I do. So, uh, not for me. I'm going to go with a three and a half out of ten. No ban, though. Don't need to ban you. Dogs galore. Chris Wood in midfield. Work for Joe Linton. I, I see. Look, I get where you're going here. I understand what you're doing. And I wonder if that's something that even Chris Wood would look to do himself. Do you know what I mean? He kind of go as like they start to bring in another striker and another striker. And Chris Wood starts to go, what am I even doing here? He then thinks, how do I save my Newcastle career? And goes, Joe Linton. Work for him. But he then goes to Eddie and goes, I've been thinking about my role in the team. Terrible. Maybe I could be a midfielder. Eh? Obviously, it wouldn't work. One out of ten. <laughs> Imagine him in centre midfield. Just like, it'd just be like Boris Johnson against Germany in that charity match. I I can't comment on that. I, 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 I... One person who could be a sort of Joe Linton type. This comes from Sunny C. Nice little shout this from nowhere. Keenan Davis reimagined as a box to box midfielder could be interesting. You can't get the ball off the lad. He's an absolute unit. This is quite a good shout. I guess the thing is, is that what you've seen now at Nottingham Forest is, is how he can be used and how exciting can, he can be up top. So you wouldn't want to kind of go away from that. But all we're talking about is, is this a player who could play in a different position? If you think of the attributes that Joe Linton had, the, the elements that have really worked for him as a box-to-box -box midfielder, I think the exact same can be applied to Keenan Davis. So I really like this shout. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. James at JY Football 22. Dwight McNeil as a left back, maybe too late in his development now to change him. Always thought playing for Burnley could give him a solid defensive fundamentals to build off. Really, really good shout from James here. I think you're right. If you think of under 21s in the top five leagues last season, no one made more tackles than him. So that those defensive fundamentals are spot on in terms of what you're saying and what he's had to do with Burnley for a good few years now. If anything, I wonder if his development going forward has been hurt a little bit by, by being at, at at Burnley in fact if he'd been at maybe a championship team where he's able to kind of 
experiment and try a little bit more or gone to the Bundesliga, maybe he would actually be better going forward. So I think this is a really good shout, actually. I really, really like it. 9.5 out of 10, especially for a team that dominates the ball. It's like a left back or a left wing back. I think it could be a really nice shout. Sad man Ahmed. McTominay is a striker if you actually think about it. So apparently he was a striker in the United Academy. I just... Just makes me feel a bit funny. Thought of McTominay up top. Does score goals at times. Can strike the ball well. Just gives me the ick. Seven out of ten. Michael Dumbbell. <laughs> Is he bringing the dumb in Dumbbell? It's Michael Dumbbell. Firmino in centre midfield. No, he's not. I like this. Um, this is a really good option. And actually, I think you might see with Nunez or Nunez coming through the door, you might see Firmino playing in the number 10 role maybe a little bit more. I think it's something they're going to look to integrate. And so you could see that. I guess him then stepping back that little bit more from there. You've always had the kind of energy and work rate from any Liverpool player. So I like this. 10 out of 10. I think this could easily work for him at any other Premier League club. He could go and be an attacking midfielder easily. I mean, he essentially plays it already for Liverpool at times. Drav S, Tavares on the left or right wing. I know it sounds wild. No, it doesn't. I think it, look, defensively, he's been really disappointing and hasn't progressed in the way that I think people would have liked. The thing that he's good at is going forward. So, makes sense. 7 out of 10. Semi season, Odegaard as a false nine. Yeah, I can see it in a sort of Man City lineup. You could imagine him flourishing as a false nine. Does like to drift over to that right hand side. Could he kind of be fixed in that position? I know false nine, you do get that element of movement, but. Overall, I think he's someone who wants to roam that little bit more and get on the ball. And so that would need to be ironed out. But yeah, 7 out of 10 as well. Flappy Hansky says, should have tried Mertesacker at striker Crouch Mark 2. That's not him signing off Crouch Mark 2. He's saying he would be like Peter Crouch Mark 2, the second version of it. This one, yeah, look, I'm going to rank it highly. Apparently he used to take the free kicks at Werder Bremen and he's scored a couple of lovely ones. Not to mention he's six foot six, so there is that Crouch vibe there. I've got to be honest, I'm not sure if it would have worked because Crouchy had a little bit more mobility because he was so slight. Whereas, I don't mean you get that with Mertesacker, but for nostalgia alone, let's be kind. Again, another 7 out of 10. Another Arsenal shout, really good shout actually from Usman. Uh, Pepe as a centre forward slash striker. I'm, I'm sure he's talking about the Arsenal player. I think he do wonders more centrally. Really, really good shout because I think the, the biggest problem with Pepe is that he's on that right-hand side and he just always wants to go in a cut inside and it's really, really predictable. So if you put him in a more central area, maybe that's where you could get you know the play that you want out of him i also think you know to see the best of him you need to have him facing the defenders so that's where the problem lies so maybe i know you're putting forward him as a center forward as a striker maybe that could work his finishing is all right but actually maybe as a 10 that could work pretty well because if you can get the ball and then turn if, he, if the defender doesn't know if he's going to go left or right because he's more central, then you might see the best out of him. But ultimately, I'd be intrigued because even in central areas, I think the coaching would be that he'll still go that way. And I think that might be the problem with him for the rest of his career, if I'm honest. At Sam Benny, Fred as a fullback slash wingback. I get it. He's got quite a few of the attributes. He's obviously not a slouch, great engine, defensively strong. I think for a team that presses, that would be great. I think... I think the problem you would have would be going forward. I'm not sure there's maybe enough sort of silk to him, if that makes sense. Like the crossing ability, the, the vision. I don't think he really has that. And so I'm not sure this one would work for me. So I'm going to go five out of 10 because I don't think it's the true waste of the, the superpowers that he has. Chad Lavalley, Leon Bailey as a nine. Like this one as well, actually quite a lot. I think look, the problem he's got again with Villa is it, that narrow system. If they are going to play those two, you know, split striker formation. But again, I guess if you're going to do that, actually, maybe it would work with him there because he is comfortable out wide, getting on the ball and then and making those runs in again. I think he's, if he can stay injury free, this guy is a really, really strong player wherever you put him uh, along the forward line. So yeah, like it. Eight out of ten. And last but not least, my this is my pick, but actually Ryan Scott put it forward as well. So, Ryan, we are brethren. Because I've been looking at this for a while. If you think about how Jesse Marsh is going to play, Jack Harrison at left back is something that I just think could work so, so well. I, I think I said it on a, the transfer stream yesterday, but I've been thinking for a while. I was chatting through with, with my boy Kai. He's not my son. He's, he's just my friend. Anyway, Ryan Scott says Jack Harrison at left back. I'm so glad someone else thinks this. Look, if you think of how Pep has like transformed Zinchenko and Delph into those roles, I think those left back and right back positions are a real opportunity for, for players. And Jack Harrison is someone who's maybe 
it's you know his greatest strength is his crossing ability to put him there and to allow him to make those deep crosses could really showcase just what is is what he's all about really you've still got the ability the stamina the dribbling ability to get past players as well but it's not the be all and end all and totally focused on that and it then allows you to maybe have more forwards in more central areas as well so love 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 jack harrison and actually i saw on twitter that he might have been playing in pre-season games as a left back as well so watch this space when it comes to jack harrison so that's 28 players i'm going to put forward one as well and then after that i want you guys to get into the comments and put forward players that have stopped playing that should have played in a different position or would play in a different position now i'll go first david beckham as a right back david beckham would have been an amazing right back now i know it's a really obvious one but you've got that parallel with him and trent i know liverpool fans and man united fans don't want those two mixed together because they're rivals but technically they are very similar in terms of how they cross and their vision and all that stuff so beckham as a right back in the modern game would be fantastic let me know who you think would be fantastic in a different position in the comments below if you like this hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time